All right, everybody, welcome back to Spoon FPV. This video is in response to my previous D-Shot video. I want to go over some tuning and some other things that I wanted to fly it a little bit longer before I put out a video on. And I've got a lot of questions regarding loop time and cycle time, and I kind of want to demystify that first. I'll put something in here to, so you can skip over this if you want. But, okay, so... A lot of race light guys, they talk 32K, 32K, 32K. What, what does all that mean, right? Um, in this case, I'm going to talk all beta flight stuff. So the first one, in this case, 8K, is the gyro update, right? So that's updating 8K or 8,000 times a second. So 1 over 8,000 turns out to be 125 microseconds. And that's how long it takes the gyro to update. The second number, in this case AK again, is the PID loop rate. So 8,000 times a second, 125 milliseconds. And the reason I'm stacking them like this is I want to show time moving from left to right. So copter moves, request gyro, 125 microseconds. Gyro data gets fed into the PID loop, 125 microseconds. And then the final AK, which is the update rate of the ESCs. If you're running synced, it's always going to be the same as the PID loop. If you're running unsynced, you can actually go faster or slower than the PID loop. Although, after you see what I'm about to show you, I don't think anybody will, should be running unsynced. So this is an example of D-Shot 600 running 8K, 8K, 8K. Now it's not exactly as bad as 125 microseconds for the gyro. What happens is the PID loop over here is requesting an update, right? The copter is still moving at that point. So the gyro reads the request. Um, and then starts to read the data and writes it to a buffer and then outputs to the PID loop. So there's less time in there than 125 microseconds for when the copter was moving to when the actual gyro data was read is what I wanted to do in here. I, I don't know, I haven't picked a gyro and looked at all the specs, but basically I'm using 60 microseconds for all of these comparisons here for the, the gyro uh, lag. Um, let's, let's call it the gyro lag, yeah, sure. Um, so copter's moving, read request comes in, it starts reading data, it gets spit into the PID loop 60 microseconds later. PID loop takes 125 microseconds to complete. And then, this is why the different protocols matter, it puts it out to the ESC. Now the ESC can't respond until it's completed the entire loop of, of data acquisition. So a D-Shot 600 running it at uh, 32k is only going to be 32 microseconds long for that loop so you add that 32 microseconds to the end of the PID loop for a total of 217 microseconds for D-Shot 600 which in, and all of these are sized relative to each other and everything's sized for time here um, so this is D-Shot 150 basically compared to the previous D-Shot 600. So we have the 60 microseconds for the gyro lag. We have the 125 microseconds for the PID loop. And then we have another 125 microseconds that we're adding to for the D-Shot 150 protocol. Now compared to D-Shot 600 running on 8K, 4K, 4K, it's almost exactly the same speed because we're the ESC's not having to wait that much longer f until it can respond. So it comes through here, 250 microseconds for the PID loop to process, and then 32 microseconds before the, the ESC starts to respond. 
So in the previous one, we have the 125 microseconds. It writes it out, but it has to wait for the entire protocol to finish, which is the 125 microseconds before it responds. At that point, it's already receiving new data in this case. So D shot 150 on uh, 8K, 4K uh, synced again, right? So now we're looking at 435 microseconds total time compared to 342 for D shot 600. So now you'll hear a lot of guys say 8K, 8K, 32K. What does that mean? Well, they're running an unsynced ESC. So you can actually just continually push the ESC to whatever the last PID update was. Now there's an advantage to this with analog because you're kind of filtering the, the, the analog signal by pushing it multiple times. Uh, you're hoping that if there's some noise in the signal, like it will get filtered out by hearing the, the answer in this case four times before it gets the, the next one. But what happens is you're not synced with the PID loop, which means that there's a delay between when the PID loop finishes and when the ESC is allowed the answer to respond, right? So... Oh, I actually, um, did I screw this one up? Yeah, I screwed this graphic up a little bit because the total cycle time is actually going to be uh, over here on this one because the 32 microseconds doesn't start counting until we go part of the way into the next step of the PID loop. So let's say the timing happened exactly perfect. You could potentially get you know, a 217 microsecond um, loop or cycle time uh, using multi-shot not synced. So that's why there's this little gray bar over here. So this is basically your range for multi-shot unsynced, but in general, it's going to be slower than if you sync it. And what I've done here is I've, I've colored these a little bit differently so you can see same value, same value, same value, same value, updated value, right? Next PID cycle, next PID cycle, different value, and so on. So multi-shot synced will run at the same speed as D-shot 600 on AK, AK, or multi-shot. Um, it's actually... Uh, I hate getting into this, but it's it's slightly D shot is actually going to be slightly faster because it runs at 33 kilohertz. But for all intents and purposes here, they're they're exactly the same. Let's let's assume that they're the same. So you can see that multi shot synced. We're running the same cycle time as D shot, and I think people were misled by my last video where I was showing removing capacitors, right? So D shot 300 and D shot 150 will run perfectly fine on a lot of ESCs without modification. I like to remove the capacitor because I don't think that it's a fair comparison with multi shot if we're adding another 62 microseconds to the total cycle time to compare multi shot or multi shot 42 or or any of these really fast protocols with D shot if we're going to make it a little bit slower. So the fair comparison would be multi-shot synced versus D-shot 600, which is why I, I showed the capacitor removed. And I think that it's the right thing to do. And I think that I'm, I, now that I'm flying D-shot, I'm certainly not going back. I think it's a lot smoother. Manufacturers are going to offer ESCs that are specifically, well, this is what I'm thinking. Probably in the future, manufacturers are going to offer ESCs that are specifically tailored for D shot 600 that they're going to run out of the box because it is that much better. It's smoother. It flies, it flies as well as multi shot, but I, I don't think that my motors are getting quite as hot, but, and I, I find it a lot easier to tune than multi shot to get that last 5% and get all, all of the shake out. 
So now that that's out of the way, uh, let's go over here and show some of the tuning requirements for a D-shot quad. So this quad, I'm running D-shot 600. You have to, you must run, you can't run unsynced. Uh, it will allow you to check this. I haven't tried it, but you know, Boris is pretty smart. He probably just ignores this flag. Um, but basically, you, you can't run it unsynced. You want these values to be, your minimum throttle has to be 1,000, your maximum has to be uh, 2,000. And then min command. Um, this is different than previous, right? We're, well, actually, minimum throttle, right? This is, this is different than previous, where you'd have the motor spinning. That's actually now taken care of in a setting in the CLI tab. So go over to the CLI tab, and it's now a feature called digital idle percentage. So I'm going to type in get digital. helps if I spell it right. So the reason I'm typing in get digital is because it's still in flux for Betaflight 3.1 and what it is. It it started out as a percentage from zero to a hundred or I, I don't remember. And then it went from zero to 255 and now the allowed range is zero to 20. Um, so if you do a diff command every time that you update and you change this number, you better look at what the allowed range is here. Um, so if your motors are stalling, up this number. If your motors are spinning too fast, you can lower this number. A digital idle percent of, of three, which is the default, seems to work for me. And I like a really slow spinning motor uh, because I like the copter to fall fast when I, when I drop the throttle. The other thing that was just pointed out to me uh, earlier today, and I got to give credit to uh, Pablo Alonso. Sorry if I butchered your name, but he basically pointed out um, to me that he was running 8K, 8K on um, running on D shot on an F3 board, and I was like, "There's no way." But Boris has done some stuff, and it's definitely worth up, upgrading to a, a later version of um, Betaflight. If you've already flashed Betaflight 3.1, the a later build of it will actually run better. So I'm run, if you can see here, I'm running 8K, 8K with only 35% uh, CPU load. And the new 3.1, they've Boris has done things to remove all the... Uh, uh, microprocessor spikes and the CPU load, load spikes. I can actually turn, here watch this, I can turn the accelerometer on and run 8K, 8K and still only be at 42% with an F3 board, which was previously unheard of. So, and I'm running, you know, black box air mode, a, a, a serial, a, a, a lot of stuff is going on in the background here and and it's handling it just fine without spiking previously I'd be a little concerned about 43 percent but it seems to be okay at that CP low CPU usage flies great um, so again thanks for watching if you have any questions post them in the comments and don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button